I've been reading this book called The Lonely City by Olivia Lang. And this book was again recommended to me by David because I've previously made a recording about this experience. And there are certain practitioners that I've read more about thanks to this book. So not only does it serve a great sentiment for really appreciating the concept of vulnerability and loneliness and how it fuels creativity, but also understanding how certain practitioners responded to this during a very difficult time in the 70s and 80s. A few weeks ago when I was introduced to this book, David, my lecturer, recommended that I look at one person in particular, um, an American autobiographical photographer called David Wojnarowicz, who is nothing but such a strong pioneering legacy in the art world. And I literally cannot, I can't forgive myself to an extent that I didn't realize or learn about this person earlier in my work. Because Wojnarowicz was an individual who went through things that most people would be defeated by. He had a very difficult upbringing. His father mistreated him and abused him. His mother could not often fend for her children as she struggled to fend for herself due to the, relation, the nature of the relationship she was in with his father. He was fostered. He witnessed his siblings go through horrible, horrible things, as well as experiencing them himself. And when I was reading this book, I could not help but feel touched, moved, disturbed, partially inspired. No, definitely inspired, definitely inspired by the resilience and perseverance from um, Wojnarowicz, because you can't help but feel this way when you read about an author who describes in vivid detail the extreme traumatic, disturbing events that certain people went through, like um, Wojnarowicz, and yet still making strong, powerful artwork to fend not just for themselves, but for other people that they represented. In addition to Wojnarowicz going through an extremely intense, traumatic childhood, unfortunately their circumstances did not improve in their adulthood life. They were struggling to find work. They didn't have a reliable home. They were very ill due to malnutrition to the point where uh, because he was a very, he was a chronic smoker, but because he was so malnutritioned, it was so bad to the point where if he smoked, when he smoked, his gums were bleeding. And that's just one example of the malnutrition. Other factors included the fact that he appeared very, very, very slim. You could see their bones. You could see other features of their skeletal system. Clear indicators that they were not, they, unfortunately they did not, they were very malnutritioned. And even reading information about that broke me because he was, he was around during the early 70s, no, sorry, during the 70s and 80s, the entire two decades, where so much was going on in New York, so much, and the world. But obviously he resided in that state and he, there was so much going on with the AIDS epidemic, civil rights, the job market, crime rates being so high. And yet this all fused into his life, which just made it more, more challenging for him to get by. And I discovered through reading this book that he was actually friends with another um, profound artist, Keith Haring, who unfortunately died of AIDS 
And they they made some really good artwork, but unfortunately their life was cut short due to this disease. Karen would basically help out Wojnarowicz the best way he could because they knew each other. But both of these practitioners also knew Nan Golden. And I just found it incredible to see how tightly knitted these practitioners were because each and every one of them have such a strong story and they inspired each other because of what they went through. So with Wojnarowicz, I'll be honest with you, it's so hard for me to talk about what they went through because it's so raw. It's so powerful how they overcame these obstacles because Wojnarowicz saw just as much as he went through. He saw his friends, close friends, ex-lovers, etc., die from AIDS. And there was one person in particular who he saw die in front of him. And he documented his friend's death with his camera. That was his way of coping. That was his way of documenting the torture and torment and horrible effects from AIDS because they were not given the support they needed. People were fighting for treatment. They were fighting for healthcare. They were fighting for funding to support people who contracted AIDS. But in addition to being a part of the AIDS epidemic and witnessing people who had it and died, as well as the fact that he had it himself throughout his life around the late 80s. Unfortunately, he contracted it himself. He, he did everything in his power to fight for justice. Wojnarowicz was basically a part of an organization called ACT UP, who Haring and Nan Golden were also a part of. And these practitioners, along with many others, formed a unity together in order to advocate for the rights in enabling people to get better health care, funding, recognition, appreciation and support. Because it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. I've only just really discovered the I wouldn't even say the depths, the introduction to what the AIDS epidemic was about, because I briefly knew about it in the past, but not as much as I do now, because the book has aided me in better understanding the impacts that it had on everyday life with people who are marginalized by society because of their sexuality. Anyone who was part of the LGBTQ community was just cast aside and abused and mistreated because of the stigma associated to their sexuality. They were stigmatized for being who they are because society were informing the public that AIDS comes from a certain group of people, which isn't correct. We all know this. We've gone past two, three, four decades from that time. A lot of research has been invested in this area. We now understand the truth of HIV and AIDS, but back then, information was very limited. There was not enough research, not enough funding put in place for people to actually understand the truth. As if there wasn't enough suffering in Wojnarowicz's life and the community that he belonged to, he had to fight, not just for himself, but for those who also experience being marginalized by this label which had a negative connotation that didn't define their truth. But above it all, Wojnarowicz just decided to step up, join ACT UP and create very strong political artwork about his own life. But it wasn't just separate to the world, it was also representing his community and the individuals who unfortunately contracted AIDS and died. 
with Wojnarowicz, he he was very honest about his work. He did not hide from anything. He really believed in standing up against society. He was very rebellious. His intention was pure and his message was very strong. He used clothing, for example, to convey messages about AIDS and how the FDA were responding to people who contracted AIDS. This was documented through photography in the streets of New York at a peak where so many riots and so many protests were happening in order to give people the right amount of attention and recognition so that they can get justice, so that they can finally have liberation against this stigma, which they did not want, but it was what society inflicted on them based on their ideologies that were not in fact correct. Because of the AIDS epidemic, it, it caused a lot of, not just upset, but trauma. People who had AIDS were just avoided like it was the plague. Andy Warhol, for example, unfortunately played a part in the behavior of just staying away from people who had AIDS. And Warhol called AIDS gay cancer, which is so disgusting and very incorrect, but also <laughs> there's an irony to his comment because he didn't realize that he was offending his own community. Warhol was gay, and yet by him saying this was gay cancer, he was inadvertently saying negative things about his own community. But Warhol is just one example of the level of arrogance that was inflicted because of the information being spread about the AIDS epidemic. And Wojnarowicz decided to just step up and say, listen, this is not true. How dare you inflict this label on me and thousands of others? This is not who we are, and we don't choose to be associated like that. And I'll be honest, when I was reading his, his quotes, it was so painful. Because you, it, it, unfortunately, Wojnarowicz passed away in 92 because of AIDS. And even though it's been over two decades, I feel like those words are still relevant to today, but for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> Wojnarowicz was marginalized because of his sexuality. He was marginalized because of contracting AIDS. And he was marginalized because he was authentic in his vision and he did not feel, he was not afraid of conveying truth. That is so applicable and relevant to me specifically because I, I've experienced uh, being marginalized because of my learning disabilities. I'm dyspraxic and I'm autistic. But in addition to that, I have PTSD. Society marginalizes people who have got labels like anything associated to mental health, like anything associated with learning disabilities. What are we to do? What, how, how do we overcome this without feeling pain, without feeling isolated, without feeling defeated? Truth be told, those emotions won't go away, at least not straight away. But what can be done is what an example again of Wojnarowicz, that those emotions, that raw, powerful energy can be conveyed through creativity so that your message can be highlighted and illustrated through visual medium. It speaks volumes when you convert all of that into your creativity. Performance practitioners do this too. Rebecca Horn does it in response to her combating her lung disease 
and how her clinical trials and periods being hospitalized inspired her to write about her experiences through her diary, her sketches about her experiences, her performances that touch on topics of vulnerability, themes of vulnerability, sorry. And Abramovic does this too. She does this through conducting immense, vivid, risk like uh, risk yeah basically just taking risks and sacrificing her body um of the materials that she's used in order to convey messages that society often run away from which is the truth Voynarovich wanted people to know the truth he wanted people to be informed advised aware of what the what was actually going on in his community. In addition to, of course, him going through everything he went through in his childhood, he, he went through a numerous amount of moments in his life where he was raped. And that in itself is traumatizing. He went through so much. He honestly did. Was he defeated though? Absolutely not. Quite the contrary, he rose above through his artwork, through his collage pieces, through his documentary self portraits, where he was hiding nothing. He revealed himself for who he was, and you can see it in his portraits that he takes pride, absolute pride in his identity, despite the fact that he went through so much because of the stigmas and because he was marginalized. I don't even know if I can say there's a conclusion to this situation with this research topic. I feel like there's so much more that needs to be done for me to reflect on Wojnarowicz's life and his autobiographical work. The information that I've discussed in this sequence is basically from the recent knowledge that I've obtained through the reading of the Lonely by sorry by reading the Lonely City by Olivia Lang. My next step is to reflect again on this material from the book, the articles that I've obtained uh, through secondary research, and really sit with it. And just let the work talk to me. Because there are clearly parallels between Wojnarowicz's work and mine. Themes of vulnerability, identity, the icon, which is the individual through self-portraiture. The message of rebellion against being stigmatized and marginalized by society because of characteristics that help us be and appreciate who we are. But it's also the fact that his work is also personal. His work was very, very personal. There was no question about that. Mine is too. Practitioners like Vonarovic, Horn, Abramovic, Golden, even Warhol to an extent, these practitioners inspired me to really pursue this journey and really utilize every single moment that I go through whilst I'm in the very early stages of accepting my ASD. There's no question that it will come with unpredictable moments of shock, horror, confusion, paranoia, despair to an extent, but that also means it will give rise to new established um, waves of positive emotions, confidence, resilience, perseverance, integrity, really embracing my integrity because I now know where it comes from. Prior to this assignment, prior to this acceptance, I always knew I was a hard worker. 
but I didn't understand why. I knew there was passion there. I knew there was this desire to express myself so elegantly in a very abstract, surreal way. But through the acceptance, it's become clear to me that this message really does need to be shared to the world. It's about time this world knows my truth. It's about time the world shakes up their perspective on what they think they know about learning disabilities like ASD, like dyslexia, like dyspraxia, the whole spectrum. It's time for the world to shake up the truth on mental health. And honestly, with, Vojvo- with Vojnarovic's period when he was around and establishing his artwork, it was the AIDS epidemic. We're currently facing COVID-19. We're in a pandemic because of a virus, and this has really shifted and transformed our lives. Everybody in this world right now feels vulnerable. To some, it's not new. To others, it's quite shocking. But we can use this to our advantage. We can move forward post-COVID. We can. But the only people who can really make that happen is ourselves.